Okay, welcome to Ask Mrs Billinghurst. Uh, today we are going to be revising GCSE computing um, and I'm going to be using some of your questions. Okay, so today's question is from Sam and he asked, how do you hexadecimal? And somebody else has put in there seconding this, so let's have a look. Hexadecimal is basically a base 16 number system. Now, Base 16 essentially means that it has 16 different types of digit in the number system. We use deanery. Now deanery is here. We use 0 to 9. Now if we need to get to 10, we have to combine two of our digits together. So you can see there 10 uses 1, 0, 1, 1 um, is not binary. It's 11, 1, 2, 12. So what we're doing is we're saying I've already counted to 9 once and now I'm into the 10s. Um, Hexadecimal works slightly differently, it uses base 16. So it still uses 0 to 9, but then it ran out of numbers, so in order to keep to a single digit, it uses A, B, C, D, E and F, which essentially means that we can count all the way up to 15 just using a single digit. Now what that means for us is that we can save much larger numbers with fewer digits. There are two ways which you can convert from deanery to hexadecimal. The first that I'm going to show you is to use binary, almost as a uh, conduit in order to move between one and the other. So the first one, this is actually a little bit easier um, in my opinion. If we take 170, the reason I'm using 170 is because it's going to use all the bits within our 8-bit binary number. So if I convert that first of all into an 8-bit binary number, we have 128, we have 32, we have 8, and we have, oh, we have 2. Um, now, 128, 32, 8, 2, that becomes 170. Uh, that's the first step. And then the second step is to convert our binary number into two halves. So what we'll do is we'll split this one here, and we will split this one here, and we split it into two halves. Now half a byte, so an 8-bit eight, eight binary number is known as a byte, um, half a byte is a nibble, and we convert these into our individual nibbles. So we don't need that 16, we don't need 64. It becomes 1, 2, 4, and 8, so they have their own individual nibbles. Now we convert both of them. So here, 8 plus 2... Well, that's 10 and here 8 plus 2 again that's 10 now we know that 10 doesn't exist in hexadecimal so let's go back to here and we can see that 10 is actually a so here we know 10 is a 10 again is a now that means that our 170 in hexadecimal is a a because this first bit here becomes this one here this second one here becomes this one here so we know that 170 in hexadecimal well that's a a and you can see again that we are saving our 170 which is three digits into a smaller version which is only two so what if I wanted to go the other way? So if I told you that F6 is actually 246 in deanery, how would I know that? Well, what I can do is I can still use my nibbles. I can say F. Well, I know, looking at my number system, let's go back and have another look. F is 15. Okay, so 15 is 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, so I need to have all the ones in there. 6, let's just pop that in f is 15. Uh, 6, well 6 is still 6, so I can work that one out. Um, 4 plus 2, good, 1's under there, zeros under everything else because I don't use them. Um, and here I then take my two nibbles and I put them together. Let's put them together properly. This becomes now 16, this becomes 32, 64 because I'm doing powers of 2, so 1, 2, 8. Now, if I add up 128, 64, 32, 16, 4, and 2, I end up with 246. So you can do it in reverse. Your final alternative is to look at a different style of conversion. And you can go directly from hexadecimal uh, to deanery or from deanery to hexadecimal just by using this thing called div and mod. Now you've been doing div and mod since you were at primary school. Div is essentially int integer division. How many times does x go into y? So if we had how many times does 2 go into 5? We know that it goes into 
five twice but we have a remainder and that's where the mod comes in the mod is just the remainder so if we were looking at div we'd say how many times does two go into five well that's two so the div is two and what is the remainder the remainder is one so therefore that's the mod now how does this work with hexadecimal well let's go back to 170 what we would do is we take 170 and we would divide it by 16 now that gives us 10.625. Now we're only interested initially in the div, which is the integer division. So we want to look for the integer. So we know that 16 goes into 170 10 times. We then take our 0.625 and we times it by 16 to get the remainder. That gives us 10 again. So our div is our first number, so that's our integer division. Our mod is our second number which is 10 again we're going to go back and we're going to look at that chart there and we know that 10 is actually a so we can convert them back now into 10 becomes a 10 becomes a so it's a a it's actually much much quicker especially when you're in the exam however if you do start to panic then do by all means go back to this converting via binary. The most important thing that you need to remember in the exam is that you show your working out. You do get marks for showing exactly the same as you would in maths, you get marks for showing the process that you used in order to get there. So Sam, you asked me, how do you hexadecimal? That is how you hexadecimal.